Greetings all Masavan crew. I'm Casper Lamayasfa from the Hopi Nation. I come from a territory that sits atop three mesas tucked away in a remote corner of Northeast Arizona. It's still one of the few places in America where religion and culture are part of everyday life. In many ways, things have not changed much over the last thousand years in terms of geology, philosophy, and the value principles of our culture. The Hopi language has been around for 4,000 years, maintaining also some of the oldest continuously inhabited places on earth within the villages thereof. Hopi land is also not a reservation as the inhabitants have never been relocated. And even with the introduction and continuance of technology, life is still simple here. As a youth, I spent a great deal of time back and forth from Hopi land to the Navajo Res. My mother is Navajo from the Bitterwater Clan, and my father was Hopi from Masao, or Fire Clan. My grandfather, Senki Lamayasva, on my dad's side, however, had the biggest influence on my life. My kwa was from the Sun Clan, and his teachings throughout my lifespan were instrumental in my everyday endeavors. Not only as a lyricist, poet, and musician, or the many titles that have followed me throughout the years, but as a human being. As a God-fearing man, he instilled the discipline and knowledge of self-theory. His detail to kindness and compassion were epic and will always be with me until the very end. In 1985, a cultural connection was formed between the Hopi Nation and the island of Jamaica. In that year, Freddie McGregor, also known as Hopi Freddie, became the first Jamaican reggae artist to ever perform on Native American soil. There was a special feeling that developed between the reggae artists and the Hopi people. The message in the music was something that the people in Hopi understood. As a result, reggae in Hopi land was born. The cultural connection was so powerful that it brought some of the biggest names in reggae music to a place so isolated that it's a two hour drive just to have a pizza. Superstars such as Black Uhuru, Third World, Steel Pulse, and The Burning Spear have all been to Hopi land. There also are the beginnings of my musical endeavors that have taken me all over the world. Some of the questions you might ask are, what are the connections between the Hopi roots and reggae? I truly believe that the roots and culture aspect of the music is what makes the connection between not just the Hopi people, but indigenous people worldwide and those in Jamaica. This music is a gift and my responsibility to not waste this gift. We all have a story to tell and this is just my vision and my version in this thing we call life.
Now this the version That's what to guide me You will listen to me lyric, listen to me story I'll teach you a true lesson of a true history Me name no matter what me come, half a whole be Cause why, cause why my name rough and ready No Indian come from India A true native mommy come from Arizona Original and or that we claim We tell you most natives they're not the same No Indian come from India A true native mommy come from Arizona Original and or that we claim Being young, a small pick on me. Me come no hope land to visit my granddaddy. Still living in the village of them Kekots Mobi. He's quite hard to me, but to you a saint. A Sun Clan people come from Palaka, located in the area of First Mesa. He used to talk about the troubles in society, the economic problems with this democracy. No Indian come from India. A true native mommy come from Arizona. Original land or that we claim. We tell you most natives them not the same. No Indian come from India A true native mommy come from Arizona Original land or that you claim Tell your most natives they're not the same The mountains who parted the sea ja, The ja, drama's now me ja, comfy seek Jaja man They say he sent to us his only begotten son The Lion of a Juta, he come once again This has been written from beginning to end You must take heed and listen to the words I speak Satan is here to inherit the weak No Indian come from India A true native mommy come from Arizona Original and boy that me claim You tell your most natives them not the same No Indian come from India Take the mommy come from Arizona Original and or that we claim We tell you most natives we're not the same Well, you are now standing on the Hopi land, and I can only tell you what I learned from my elders who met in Shungo for the Second Mesa in 1948 and told many things that I felt what they say are very important not only for Hopi, not only Native people in this land, Western Hemisphere, but all our nations that they knew would be coming here from around the outside of the world. This area, the Hopi, were led into by ancient people. They have four sacred mountains in this four corners area, drawn by shrines built on the long time ago. And this is just a spiritual center or heart of Mother Earth. So they said, we must leave this in natural state because if we rip up this earth from all around the world, people for money and job and good time and just rip it up but if we live up in this four corners area, in natural state that the Great Spirit made, just leave it that way and hold it by prayer, fast, ritual, ceremony. Every month to keep this land and life in balance, 
people, not only here, but around the world. One of the Hopi ways is that we have to respect one another. And what Hopi is, is that respect, peace among other people and also among all other living things, meaning the plant life, the animal life. We have to respect all of those things and that's the Hopi way. We have to welcome people, even our enemies. We pray for our enemies in the ceremonies, rituals. That's the main thing is that we pray for all living things in this world. also one that was told to us that we must not forget. That's one way 
that we have someone to honor that that uh, gave us the land to leave here with him and he provides everything for us to leave here on this earth and we went on four directions to hold it in balance through a ceremony that's why they take different societies to take care of that they sing prayer fast meditate and that's how we keep this nature in balance and that's what we the hope is trying to hold on to now and other native people to to perform the ceremony so that this world will continue on that got to come from the heart of a spiritual people who knows what to sing and how to perform a ceremony and other things and that that would keep this in balance be spiritual all the time every day your parents know your grandparents know the uncles know we are very spirit spiritual it begins in the daybreak all day and to the end of the day and even at night we pray we pray for good things we pray for what do we need we pray for our families we pray for other people we pray for our friends we pray for our enemies and with all of the ways things that we do is intertwined with spirituality
They want it but a small piece of land But from coast to coast C to C They call it their manifest destiny From coast to coast C to C They call it the manifest destiny From border to border From border to border And then they wiped out the Sioux And wounded knee Then they took away the Black Hills country So whether you're a Navajo or a Hopi Tell you how the West was won In a murder style In a murder style Tell you how the West was won Gonna tell you how the West was won In a murder style In a murder style don't call them Indians, call them Native Americans Don't call them Indians, force upon the reservation Don't call them Indians, call them Native Americans Don't call them Indians Juan Casper There were these foreigners who came to take all the land They killed men and women and even children Destroyed all the buffalo population And tried to put my people on their reservation Tell you how the West was won Gonna tell you how the West was won In a murder style Throughout history, dolls have been given to children to pass the time and spark their young imaginations, and even as tools of reassurance in solemn times. However, in some cultures, dolls have been given to the young as a tool of education to teach them about subjects in an entertaining, personal, and creative way. Native Americans across North America have used dolls to teach the young about their ancestors and the ancestral ways for centuries. These dolls are called kachinas. The first recorded encounter with the Hopi people dates back to the 16th century, which means they spent a great distance in their native northwest Arizona, spanning 1.5 million acres to be exact. Within these 1.5 million acres, the tribe spans 12 villages across three mesas, aptly named First Mesa, Second Mesa, and Third Mesa. This explains why each Hemis Kachina looks different. Each village depicted each Kachina to their own understanding around some general guidelines. Same as we draw our human generally the same, but different to our own personal preferences. As we see here, generally Hemis Kachina includes his elaborate rectangular headdress, square head, white kilt, and black body, sometimes depicting signs of fertility to ensure a good crop season. Those would be those little white lines on his torso. Prior to introducing our guest of honor, Hemis Kachina, I mentioned that these dolls are primarily used in education. Although I have been calling these figures dolls, they are actually meant as physical representations of the Hopi spirits called Kachina, hence the origin of the doll's name. The Hopi traditionally believe that the earth was created by Tawa, the sun god, and that everything on earth is alive with a spirit. To quote the documentary, Hopi, a people of peace, for the Hopi, the entire universe is alive. Every part is interconnected and each part affects the whole. This includes man who must also help in maintaining the harmony of the universe. Kachinas are spirits that help take our messages to the other special beings that we pray to. They are the messengers and we must keep that going. I am only here to bring my message from the elders to spring people and other people and living things on this earth who are here and I know that our spirit people are here, the plant, water, and all the birds, animal things that were here. And I'm sure that there are other sacred sites here which our ancestors left long time ago. And I'm glad to see this water is still here and I hope it will continue to give water to every living thing on this earth. The inspiration for this song on my latest musical quest with Highest Conspiracy 
came from the Standing Rock Indian Nation Dakota Access Pipeline protest in North Dakota. It made national news and inspired a huge grassroots movement. I hope you enjoy everything we've done. We give thanks and praise always to the Most High. Be good to each other, respect each other, and love yourself. Because you can't love others until you do so. Respect. Somebody came in without permission from the elders, religious leaders, and took that uranium out and tested it in New Mexico and threw it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That is why they, those met in Sonopave, four days, and they wanted to let the world know that we are getting into more tender spirit now. They offer this prayer to these sacred mountains, four mountains, from spiritual, we're sending it to the edge of life in ever. That's how we keep this land in balance. White people don't understand this kind of thing. They own enough for money and job and good time. They don't care about land. They want to sell and buy and destroy everything. But if we find this to be true, then we correct, change the stuff this wrongdoing and make this life beautiful, clean again. When they sing and dance, gentle rain will come and be a lot of grass, flowers, animal, birds, be so happy. And maybe they leave a lot of good people who will purify this land, rivers, ocean, lake, and make life beautiful, clean again, and join with the native people who sing, pray, fast, meditate, so that this world come back again. <laughs> 